Oh. Hey, how are you? Welcome to Ben's Lab. I'd like to talk to you today about water. It's a very uh, important topic to us here in Australia, particularly in summer when it's just uh, so hot and hot and also more hot. Um, but uh, our little planet isn't the only place where it's found. And I'd like to take you a little tour today of the solar system and show you some of the places where water has been observed. And uh, it's in some places that you may not expect. So um, tag along for the ride. A grand tour of water and the solar system on Ben's Lab. Water. Water is the most important molecule on Earth. All life requires it in order to function, and water has played a critical role in the rise of human civilization. About 70% of Earth is covered by water. How much water is here? Well, give or take a litre, Earth possesses about 1,260 million trillion litres of water, or 326 million trillion gallons. Holy cow, that does seem like a lot, but is it? Here is the earth with all its water removed, placed in that neat little blue ball. That is all of the world's oceans right there. See the tiny blue ball next to the oceans? That is all of the world's fresh water. Only 0.006 of that fresh water is accessible and usable by humanity. All of us, all 7 billion of us, plus most of our life on earth, relies on that. Maybe we should look after it. So where else is water found? Let's go find out, starting with a place we'll never expect. Let's head out. Oh, oh my god, it's hot. Yep, the sun. You wouldn't think it, it does seem possible to us down here because we see the sun as nothing more but an epic ball of superheated plasma, uh, keeping us warm. Uh, with temperatures in the core uh, of up to 15 million degrees Celsius, and on the surface it gets down to only 5,500 degrees Celsius. But uh, water vapor has been observed forming in regions on the sun known as sunspots, which are regions of higher magnetic activity, which actually bring us uh, temperatures in, the, in that particular part of the sun down uh, through mechanisms as yet not fully understood. Uh, so, strangely true, there is water vapour on the sun. Next stop, Mercury. The closest of the eight planets to the sun at a distance of only 57.9 million kilometres. Basically, Mercury is a barren hellhole, completely lifeless and lacking any kind of atmosphere. Satellite images show this to be the case, not very appealing, but other pictures show a different story. These craters at Mercury's North Pole sit near the Terminator line. This is the line where Mercury's night side meets the day side. Now, some of these craters contain regions that are permanently in shadow. In their shadows, temperatures drop and it's so cold the water ice has been observed in them. Not bad for a planet where during the day it reaches 400 degrees Celsius. Moving right along. Second from the Sun. When early astronomers saw Venus was covered with clouds, they imagined a tropical planet drenched in constant rainfall. Venus is considered the sister planet of Earth, with almost identical size and gravity. But that's where the family ties vanish though. Venus's thick clouds are almost entirely carbon dioxide and its surface atmospheric pressure is 92 times that on Earth. Satellite observations at Venus have revealed evidence that long ago Venus may have had continents and oceans just like Earth. The only water on Venus now exists in tiny traces of vapour in its atmosphere. In fact, only 0.002% of Venus's atmosphere is water vapour. Where did all that water go? Here's a short and simple answer. Solar winds from the sun stripped away most of Venus's water billions of years ago. Here on Earth, our water is protected by the planet's magnetic field, which also protects life on Earth from solar radiation. Hang on, I hear you ask. Why didn't Venus's magnetic field do the same thing? Because Venus has no magnetic field. Earth has a magnetic field because its active inner and outer cores churn and convect, creating protective magnetic field around us. 
But for some reason long ago, something caused Venus' core to shut down, rendering the planet defenseless against solar winds. For all we know, some of that Venusian water came our way. Mars. Mars is a bit of a rock star these days. It's on everyone's lips. NASA wants to go there, Europe wants to go there, Elon Musk wants to go there. It's considered a feasible place for permanent human habitation. It's now widely accepted that Mars, like Venus, had oceans long ago. Four billion years ago, Mars was possibly quite Earth-like. Again, like Venus, these oceans disappeared over time. Again, like Venus, lack of an active core producing a magnetic field is a probable factor. However, in terms of water, Mars does much better than Venus these days. With polar caps of water ice and flows of liquid water having been observed, this water will be essential for any human colonies that eventually arrive on Mars. Now, let's move on. We're heading to the outer planets now, but on our way, lying between Mars and Jupiter, is the asteroid belt, a ring of debris left over from the formation of the solar system. Ceres is an asteroid so large it's now considered a dwarf planet, and it's the largest object in the asteroid belt. Ceres is thought to contain a lot of water. In fact, almost 30% of this tiny world may be water. Much of this is trapped in the form of ice or slush lying a metre or so below the surface. It's also possible that Ceres may harbour a liquid ocean deep below its surface. This ocean may be more salt than water though. Again, like on Mercury and even the Moon, water ice has been observed in craters on Ceres that have regions of permanent shadow. Bye Ceres, we'll see you later. As we journey outwards and towards the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, it seems unlikely we're going to find water. After all, these planets are primarily gases such as hydrogen and helium. But what of their moons? Jupiter has at least 67, and Saturn has 62 known moons. Of Jupiter's moons, Europa, a personal favourite of mine, is strongly believed to possess a subsurface ocean, containing more than twice the volume of water on Earth. This ocean may be up to 100 kilometers deep. Another Jovian moon, Ganymede, may possess a similar subsurface ocean, again up to 100 kilometers deep. Astrobiologists are extremely interested in the prospect of life on Europa, and so missions are planned for launch somewhere in 2020. Enceladus is a moon of Saturn, a real pinup. Enceladus definitely possesses water. How do we know this? Because it's been observed directly. This was first seen by NASA's Cassini mission in 2005 when huge geysers were seen jetting up from the moon into space. Like Europa and Ganymede, Enceladus is believed to harbour an ocean, hiding beneath a thick crust of ice. We're going to keep journeying out, past the ice giants Uranus and Neptune, and make the dwarf planet Pluto our final step for today. Pretty much everything we know about Pluto comes from a recent flyby in 2015 by NASA's New Horizons probe. The planet's surface is mysterious and surprising, containing large-scale features like this icy heart that seems to wander. How could this happen? It could happen if a lubricating layer, perhaps of water, existed on which the planet's crust could slide around. Now, this is only a guess so far, as is the existence of oceans on Europa, Ganymede and Enceladus. But enough scientific observation has been made of these worlds for some pretty decent inferences and educated guesses to be made. Is water out there? There's only one way to know for sure. Then more probes, study these places in more detail. We can only wait for more missions. But in the meantime, who knows what's beyond the solar system? Over 3,000 exoplanets have been catalogued and it's absolutely anyone's guess what's out there. That is the coolest part about it, imagining these strange new worlds. One day, we may even call one of them home. Imagine that.